Apostle Francis D. Hardison, and I say welcome, welcome, welcome to my YouTube channel and also Church on Thursday. I am so glad to have each one of you joining us tonight. If you have not done so, would you please like and subscribe to my channel so that you can be notified whenever I go live or when new content is uploaded to this channel. I would love for you guys to become a part of my YouTube family. And also on tonight, if this is your first time viewing, please put something, in, please comment number one in our chat section and someone from this Church on Thursday community will welcome you and I promise that I will go back and that I will welcome you also. Once again, I am Apostle Francis D. Hardison. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my YouTube channel. And I'm so glad to have you to be a part of this YouTube channel and also Church on Thursday. Well, for the last three weeks, I have been discussing with you all from the message topic, what are you saying? Yes, what are you saying? What are the words that you are releasing out of your mouth? I gave the challenge for you guys to go seven days without speaking any words that were negative or any words that were not faith-filled or any words that were not building up or edifying. And I'm finding out when we take time to monitor our speech, to see what we are saying, it makes a big difference. So we are here tonight to go into that discussion. If the Lord say so, I might be concluding it. I don't know yet, but I want to ask you guys the question. What are you saying or what have you been saying for the last seven days? What are the words that you have released out of your mouth? Were you speaking positive words about people, positive words about yourself, or were you speaking negative words about other people or negative words about yourself? I believe the essence of this teaching has been for all of us to monitor our speech. For we have to realize and understand that the kingdom of heaven is voice activated. Sometimes we, even in the church, do not realize the power of our words, what words can do, how words can affect us, how words can affect those around us. So it's vitally important that we, I'm talking about all of us, that we monitor the words that come out of our mouths. And I know I've been hitting on this, but I still want to hit it tonight to let all of us know, you know, that we are in a decade of pain, which is the mouth, and the mouth deals with words, words that we release out of our mouth. And I am finding out we're walking heavily. For 10 years, we started in 2020. On the Hebraic calendar, that was the year 5780. Now we find ourselves in the year of 2023. Hebraic calendar, 5783. And we are still walking heavily, heavily under the decade of our mouths. And God is trying to tell us that if we don't like what's happening, if we don't like what's going on in our own little world, we need to monitor our speech. Yes, I've been telling people, if you don't mean it, please don't say it because those words are suspended in the atmosphere. Those words are over your head and those words are just waiting on a chance to be fulfilled. Once we understand that the kingdom of God is voice activated, it will teach us don't say everything. Everything comes to our mind. We don't have to say it. We can swallow it down. And I'm finding out that a lot of people in the body of Christ, 
that are in the church, they have a loose mouth. Yes, a loose mouth. Somebody said, well, what is that? A loose mouth is saying anything. Anything comes to the mind, they say it with no regards as to how the other person may feel. And I'm here to tell all of us, let's monitor. Let's monitor our words. If our words are not building up, if our words are not edifying, don't say it. We are torn down too much. And you don't have to be a partaker of tearing your brothers down, tearing your sisters down, nor tearing yourself down. We get enough of that as it is. Our job as being in the body of Christ is to build up, to build up and to edify. We are to build up each other. We are to edify each other. And if we can't find anything good to say about somebody, don't say anything. Just walk away. Don't become a part of the conversation. Don't try to add one cent. Don't try to add two cents. Don't try to add three cents. Don't add any cents to whatever the conversation might be. Because in the day of judgment, you and I, we are going to give an account for every idle word that has come out of our mouths. Now, that's something to think about. On the day of judgment, when we stand before God Almighty, we are going to have to give an um, account for every idle, useless, senseless word that we said. Just knowing that, it causes me to monitor, to monitor my speech. I don't want to say anything. I don't want to say everything because I know that I am going to have to give an account for those words that come out of my mouth. So what are you saying? What have you been saying? Prayerfully, you have gone the seven days without speaking negativity, without speaking doubt and words that are not filled with faith. I pray you have. And if you have been following us for the last three weeks and have taken this challenge, please put it in the chat. Please put it in the chat. Say, I have been following. I have been following. And I have been doing now. If you've had some challenges as to keeping your mouth zipped up, not saying whatever came to your mind, put it in the chat. Let us know what was the challenge and how did you overcome? We overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. Your testimony will give strength to somebody else. Your testimony will let someone else know I was there. I walked through the challenge. Every day wasn't easy. Every day was a Sunday. But guess what? I made it. If I have anyone on church on Thursday tonight that can say I made it, put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. Let everybody know I made it. Somehow, I made it. I'm not giving room to the devil. I'm not letting the devil overrule. I'm not letting the devil override. I am watching what I say because God is elevating us. God is pulling us. God is pushing us. God is catapulting us into another dimension. And the dimension is going to be controlled by your mouth. Come on. It's going to be controlled by whatever you release out of your mouth. If you release the wrong thing, you're not going to get anything. But honey, we got to start taking account. What are you saying? What are you saying? Have you reached out this week? Have you reached out within the last seven days to build your brother up, to build your sister up, to build somebody else up, a family member? Come on, because sometimes we beat poor family members down. Yes, we'll treat the outside people better then we treat our family members. We are just praise outside people. But when it comes to family, a lot of family members will talk about them, criticize them, put them down. We don't want to be found like that. No, ma'am. No, sir. We do not want to be found like that. 
We want to be what God has called us to be. We want to do the work that God has called us to do. And the work is going to begin with our mouth. Come on. The work is going to begin with our speech. Come on. We're not going to speak negativity. We're going to speak positive words. We are going to speak positive words. Come on. No matter what the situation might be, no matter how rough it might be, no matter how tough it is, you've got to open up your mouth and say, by the grace of God, I'm coming out. Come on. you got to put in your own atmosphere. You've got to say it until it gets into your spirit so your spirit can believe what you say. Yes, we all have difficult times. Yes, we all have challenges. But the outcome is determined by what comes out of our mouths. Come on. We are not defeated. In case you didn't know, we are not defeated. We are on the winning tide. We're on the winning team. We win. Come on. Everything connected to you win. That's what you got to say. Children may not be doing what's right. Spouse may not be doing what's right. Don't look at it and start criticizing. Stop fussing about it. But talk to God. Come on. Look beyond what you see. Come on. Look beyond what they are saying. Come on. I know that's difficult. Yes, ma'am. I'm not that ignorant. I know sometimes that can become difficult. But we got to stand up. We've got to stand up on the word of God. We've got to decree what the Lord has said. Come on. God has promised salvation to our entire household. Yes, ma'am. Johnny may be going astray. Susan may be going astray. But it's up to you. Put it in the atmosphere. Satan, you're not going to have my child. You are not going to have my son. You are not going to have my daughter. You are not going to have my spouse. Because God has promised. Woo, my God. God has promised. It's something when God promises. I'm not talking about your husband promising you. I'm not talking about your wife promising you. I'm not even talking about the pastor. I'm talking about God. I'm about shit ten now. I'm talking about God. Because God is a man who cannot lie. The son of man that he would not repent. Have God not said it. And will not God make it happen? I'm here to tell you as a living witness, God will make it happen. Man can't make it happen, but God can. God will. Stand up, people. Stand up, stand up, stand up. On the word of God. Let's read a scripture here right briefly. Oh, we want to read a scripture. We want to read a scripture. Matthew, the fifth chapter, and the eleventh verse from the ESV, English Standard Version. Listen at what it says. It's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of a mouth. This defiles a person. So in other words, it's not what you put in your mouth. That's defiling you. Come on. Oh, girls, oh, boys, oh, men, oh, women. It's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person. Come on. Sometimes it's, well, I'm eating the wrong thing. I'm being defiled. No, 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 no. It's not what you put in your mouth that defiles a person. The Bible said for Matthew 5 and 11, the English Standard Version, it is but what comes out of the mouth that defiles a person. What are you talking about? Negativity, foul speech, unclean speech, filthy speech, talking all these kind of talk that we should not talk. That defiles a person. And you know, whatever is on the inside, it's going to come out. What's in the heart, it's going to come out. Come on. And that is what defiles a person. Sometimes people can play the game so good until they open their mouth. Oh, my, my. They can play the game so good until they open their mouths. Before they open their mouths, people thought they were saved. Come on. They thought they were intelligent. Come on. They thought they were smart until 
they open their mouths. And when certain people open their mouths and that foul talk starts coming out. A long time ago, we used to call them Sunday school words. You all know what I'm talking about. We call them Sunday school words. But honey, they're just cussing. Yes, ma'am. See you. S S I N G. They're just cussing. And that is defiling you. Don't you hate to see a woman out there defiling herself by, as my mama would say, cussing like a sailor, sound like an old drunk man? Come on. There's nothing worse than seeing a woman defile herself, make herself um, seem just like she's nothing. Come on. But we're here to elevate ourselves. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. We are here to elevate ourselves on church on Thursday. It's not what goes in the mouth that defiles you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. It's not what goes in your mouth, but it is what comes out of the mouth. How is your speech? Come on, be real. We got some people in the house of God and they talking all kind of talk. Oh my God. It's not God. It's not God. It's not God. When people in the house of God saying anything, uh-huh. I've heard people say that I'm saved, but I say a little cuss word every now and then. You know what? They just fooling themselves. Come on. Come on. There is no salvation in saying Sunday school words and saying cuss words. You're defiling yourself. And when you get through opening up your mouth, people will say, Oh, I thought he was saved. I thought she was saved. But when she opened her mouth, when he opened his mouth, I found out. I found out they weren't saved. What are you saying? Come on. What are you saying? What have you been saying? I pray that since you have been following me now for four weeks, as I have gone in depth in this teaching, that your vocabulary has changed. I pray that your speech has changed. I pray that you have been monitoring what comes out of your mouth because at the end of the day, oh, at the end of the day, we want to be found talking. We want to be found conversing just like the Lord. If it's not godly, don't say it. Come on. If it's not building up, if it's not edifying, don't say it. Come on. Save yourself the time. Save yourself the energy. When we talk negativity, you know what? We are expending a lot of negative energy. It takes a lot of energy to talk negativity all day long. Come on. I believe some people get up talking negativity. Neg negativity. I believe they go to bed talking negativity. They wake up. That's all they know. Now, y'all know y'all know some people like that. Sometimes we got people in our own families. All they know is negativity. I used to be around an individual and they would complain all the time. No matter what you would say to try to pull that individual up, you know what? It didn't work. Why? Because that form of speech had become their lifestyle. Come on. That had become all that they knew. Even though they were around church people, that's all they wanted to know. And matter of fact, they didn't want to change. Ah, ah. Somewhere in our lives, we got to want to change. Come on. I'm talking to all of us. Somewhere in our lives, we have got to want to change. God's not going to make you change. Uh-uh. He's not going to make me change. I can keep on talking if I'm not talking right. He's not going to make me straighten up. He's not going to make me talk the right talk. God does not do that. So somewhere in our lives, we got to call ourselves in. Oh, blah, blah, blah. I like that. Somewhere in our lives, we have to call ourselves in. A long time ago, I shared with people how we have to have a board meeting. Yes, ma'am. We have to call me, myself, and I to the board meeting. Yes, ma'am. We got to call all these different personalities that live on the inside. We got personalities that want to show up. We got personalities that want to show out. And it's not godly. I pray I'm helping you. Oh, y'all looking real funny. You're looking strange at me right now. But there are personalities that live on the inside. Come on up in here. And it's time to call that board meeting. 
Sit them down at that table and let that one that always run off at the mouth say, you know what? We're not doing that, no ma'am. No, sir, we're not doing that anymore. You are not going to be a part of my life and run off at, at, at the mouth. Why? Because I'm a child. My God, you first got to know who you are. You have to identify who you are. You are a child of God. You are a child of the Most High God. You belong to the royal priesthood. God is your father. Jesus Christ is your elder brother. So we don't have any right to talk any kind of talk. Come on up in the room. Woo! I tell you, I feel the power. It doesn't take much. I feel the power of the Ruach Kogadash because you first got to identify who you are. And once you identify who you are, a child of the king, come on, that God is my father and Jesus Christ is my brother, it'll make us tighten up. I'm talking about all of us. It'll make us tighten up. Come on. When you go on the job, you won't get into every kind of conversation. When they're over there talking about the co-workers, you won't be over there talking. Why? Because you realize who you are. I find out a lot of times we're in the body of Christ and we don't know our identity. Come on. Oh, boys, oh, girls, oh, men, oh, women. We have to know our identity. I belong to Christ. Yes, ma'am. You belong to Christ, and we just don't have time. Come on. Tell, if I were in church, I'd tell them, tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. I don't have time. Come on. I don't have time. I can't waste my time. I can't stay there any longer because I know who I am. I know whose I am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. It's a difference when you know your identity. Your speech will line up with who you identify yourself with. Oh, I like that. Your speech will line up with who you identify yourself with. Come on. If you identify yourself with God, you go, you will have godly speech. My God. Woo. You will have godly speech. You won't have ungodly speech when you identify with your creator. Come on. We were created to worship him. We were created to praise him. Come on. And we can't have all this talk coming out of our mouths. God is, I told you, God is elevating. God is pushing. God is calling us. Come up higher. Come up hither. I've got somewhere. Shandero Mohaye. I've got somewhere you've got to go. So let's get it right now. Come on. Because God said, I can't put you on a stage. I, uh, I can't put you on a platform and you don't have the right speech. Come on up in here. You can't get up delivering the word of God and, and as we say, rebuking everybody. Come on. That's not God. I hate to tell you. It's not God. God said a platform might be there. The next stage might be there. But until you get your speech right, honey. You're not going. Tell your neighbor, you're not going. Come on. Because the Bible said, it is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person. Come on. Oh, my, my. It's not what I put in my mouth that's defiling me, but it's what's coming out. Come on. Woo. The words that I release out of my mouth, that's defiling me. The words that you release out of your mouth, that is defiling you. Those words are causing you to be messed up. Yes, ma'am. Oh, God. Causing you to not go where God is calling you. Causing you not to fulfill the plan and the purpose that God has for your life. What are you saying? Talk to me, somebody. Talk to me in that chat. What are you saying? Are you saying the words that God wants you to say? Are you building up? Build up yourself. Come on. Sometimes people say, well, I'm waiting on somebody to pat me on my back. I'm waiting on somebody just to pat me. I'm waiting on somebody to encourage me. I'm waiting on somebody to recognize my gifting. I'm waiting on somebody to recognize my anointing. I'm waiting on someone to recognize my calling. But sometimes, mm, there is a sometimes. Come on. There are. Is a sometimes, or there are sometimes, put an S on it. There are sometimes you won't get the pat on your back. 
you will not get the encouraging words that you want to hear. So you have to be assured of your calling. You have to be assured of your anointing. You have to be assured on the inside of what God has called you to do. Then you can stand up and have a mirror talk. Build yourself up. Come on, girl, boy. No one encouraged me, but honey, I'm encouraging myself. Come on. The songwriter said, speak a word over your life. Come on. You got the power, people, in your own tongue, with your own speech, to speak over your life. You can encourage yourself. So just in case, come on, just in case no one has ever built you up, build yourself up. Come on. Build yourself up. And every time a negative voice comes and tells you that, you know, God didn't do this. God hasn't called you. God has not anointed you. Shut it down. My God, shut it down. You don't have to follow it up. I told you, following up stuff, cause speaking negative energy, it, it calls you, it calls a lot of energy to come off of us. We don't have to follow that up. I found out in my journey that I had to rest assured in knowing who I am, mm, who I am. So if nobody ever says a good word, we want that good word. If no one ever says an encouraging word, we want that encouraging word. But just in case, uh, I pray I'm helping you just in case you don't get it. Your pastor may never admit it. Your pastor may never encourage you. Your first lady may never encourage you. Well, why can't you encourage yourself? Ask the question. My God, why can't you encourage yourself? Stand in the mirror. Have that mirror talk. Encourage yourself. I am God's anointing. Come on. I am loved by God. Come on. I am the apple of God's eye. God has anointed. God has appointed. God has called. I'm building up. Come on. Oh, wow. See what come out of my mouth. Sometimes you got to say what's coming out of your mouth. Let it build you up. Come on. Don't defile yourself by the words that come out of your own mouth. A lot of times people are defiling themselves by the words that come out of their mouths. Talking about I don't know. Oh, they said, they said I wasn't nothing, so I guess I may not be nothing. Honey, wake up. Tell the devil, devil, you a liar. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. I am somebody. Come on. Woo, what are you saying? Oh, that word bless me. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person. Mm -mm -mm. But what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a person. Somebody said, well, how am I going to overcome negativity? How am I going to overcome speaking negative? How am I going to overcome it? I just don't know. Somebody said, well, I've been following this teaching. I have been doing what the woman of God said, but I can't overcome. Why can't you overcome? Why can't you overcome? I'm glad you want to know. If you want to, if you want to know, put it in the chat. I want to know. I want to know because I got a scripture. I thank God. This is scripture time. I pray you all keeping up with this. I pray that you're taking notes. I pray that you'll even go back and watch some of these replays and get what you didn't get. Because remember, girls and boys, men and women, people of God, we've got somewhere. We've got to go. And our speech is going to determine whether we get there or whether we don't go. So how am all of us, how, how are we all going to overcome negativity? It all starts in the mind. Oh, God. My, 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 my. Woo. Yes, Lord. The Bible tells us in Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, brothers, whatever, we're going to pay attention to this, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, listen, 
whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think. Did you say think? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I said think. Think about these things. You're going to cancel out negativity by doing just what I said. Now we're going to read. I, I'm going to read it again because we're going to cancel this stuff out. Come on. You got to change your thinking. If you sit there and think negative stuff all day long, you are going to speak negative stuff all day long. You have become a product of what you think. The mind is very powerful. Your mind can imagine things that are not true. Your mind can make you believe stuff that's not true. Your mind can cause you to think on things. And I like what I'm getting ready to say. That will keep you in the gutter. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't look at me like that. Your mind will cause you to think about things that will keep you in the gutter. So God knew. He already got like what I like about God. God knows everything. Isaiah 46 and 10. God has declared our end from the beginning. God knew we're going to be in this teaching talking about what are you saying. God knew we were going to be in it for four weeks. And God knew some of you were saying, well, I'm coming. I'm there. But I don't know what to do. I don't know how to overcome this negativity. I don't know how to overcome this negative speech that I have coming out of my mouth. Well, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that God has each one of us covered. And God's got us covered in Philippians, the fourth chapter, and the eighth verse. This is what we got to do. Finally. Come on, you done did everything else. You, you thought on everything else. You watched everything else, and it has not. Come on, tell the truth. Shame that devil. And it has not done you any good. It has not caused you to be built up. It didn't cause you to build someone else up. It caused you to be in the gutter. Well, God, tonight is cleaning out the gutter. Oh, by Shandana. Tonight, God is cleaning out the gutter. And I thank God if you're in the gutter, just raise your hand. Say, this is my night. My, my, my. Woo. This is my night to come out. Come on. This is my night for a fresh start. This is my night for a new beginning. So Philippians 4 and 8 from the ESV says, Finally, brothers, talking about sisters too, because you got to understand the Bible is not gender-based. When it say brothers, it's talking about the women too. So finally, my brothers, finally, my sisters, whatever is true, don't think on a lie. Come on up in the room. Oh, people that believe a lie, before they will believe, will believe the truth. A lie will get all over time. My, my, my. People get on these hell, on telephone. We call them hellophones. I get on those hellophones and they'll start calling people up with that lie. And that lie will be all over town. Before you realize it, everybody on the same accord with the lie. Here come the poor truth. Poor truth can't hardly make it. Why? Because they're not going to spread truth. Come on. But the word of God say, we got to think on things that are true. Come on. You know that stuff not true. You know it's not true. Stop thinking on it. Stop. Come on. Tell yourself right now. If it's not true, I'm not going to think on it. This is how we're going to overcome negativity. Speaking negative speech. All right. He said, whatever is honorable. Come on. If it's not honorable, don't talk about it. Don't think about it. Get it out of your minds. When the enemy comes and try to make you think on things that, that are not true and that are not honorable, hold up. Mm -hmm. Tell that Mr. Devil, hold up. I can't do that. God has told me through the word of God that I got to think on things that are true. I got to think on things that are honorable. I'm training my mind. Oh, oh, this is boot camp. I told you guys we've been in boot camp. We got to train our minds. Come on. Everything starts in the mind. As a man thinking, so, so. 
as a man think it, so is he. Come on. It didn't say as a man say it, but as a man think it. Right? Y'all better get it. As a man think it, so is he. It didn't say I can sit up and say this and I become it. So I got to think it first. Uh -huh. I got to think these things first. And after thinking them, then I'll say it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I told you last week we'd be changing the narrative of our own life. Uh -huh. I'm not letting no anybody write the story. Come on. I'm not letting anyone write the ending. I'm not letting anybody write the middle. I'm not letting anyone write the beginning. Because the devil has already written a narrative. But honey, we are changing. We are changing that narrative. I'm not going down that path. Whatever is true. Whatever is honorable. Think on it. Whatever is just. Think on it. Come on. We're training our mind. We're overcoming. Tell your neighbor, I'm overcoming. I am overcoming negativity. I'm filling my mind with the right thoughts. And when I think on things that are true, when I think on things that are honorable, when I think on things that are just, I'm filling my mind with God thoughts. Come on. Woo. You got to fill our mind with God thoughts. We are weeding out all this negativity. We are weeding out filthy talk. We are reading, we are reading out this stuff. Weeding out. Weeding. Yes, we are weeding out. Filthy talk, corrupt talk, corrupt thinking. Come on, filthy thinking. We're weeding that stuff out. Come on, we're elevate, putting that cat, put in the chat, elevate. I'm elevating my mind. Come on, I'm elevating my mind. Whatever is just, whatever is pure, start thinking on that. Find you something that's pure. Come on, think about your little grandchildren. I don't hear nobody. Woo! Think about your spouse in a pure way. Come on. Fill your mind with pure stuff. Start thinking about the goodness of God. And I'm here to tell you by the time you just start thinking about the goodness of God, your hands going to go up. My son, da, na, na. Your feet start moving. You start clapping your hands. You start giving God glory. Come on. Think on those things which are pure. Then your soul will say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that is done for me, my very soul cries out, hallelujah. Bye -bye. I'm feeling my mind. I'm feeling my mind. My soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Whatever is lovely, think on it. We wipe it out, negativity. Wipe it out. Think on things that are lovely. Whatever is commendable, think on it. Come on. Somebody did a good deed, think on it. Come on. Somebody did somebody a favor, think on it. Come on. You might have helped someone along the way today. Think on it. Come on. Don't let the devil fill your mind up, talking all kind of talk, feel, putting all kind of thoughts in your mind. Think about the good stuff you did. My God, my son did not know. Whatever is commendable. Philippians said, think on it. Come on. We are canceling out negativity. We are thinking on things that's going to cause us to rise up. Come on. I don't know about you, but I want to rise. I want to rise up. I'm, I, I just don't want to go to the house of God and stay in the same place, stay in the same condition. I don't want to keep going to the house of God and I don't see growth. It bothers me. When I see people and they're not growing because they're not trying to grow. I know sometimes people don't grow because nobody's helping them or they don't understand how to grow. But I'm talking about these old heads now. I'm talking about those been in their 10, 15, 20, 25 years and they still in kindergarten. Y'all don't like this kind of talk. Still trying to write the ABCs. Come on. When we were growing up, when I was a little girl growing up, we had these little easy books to read. And we will say, see Sally, see. See Jack run. See Jane run. Honey. You got to move beyond Dick and Jane and Sally. I don't hear y'all. We got to move beyond that. We got to grow. Come on. If you've been in the house of God, been in God, let me take the house out. If you say you in God 10 years, 5 years, 15, 20, 25, there should be some growth. Uh-huh. There should be some growth. 
Maybe no one ever told you. And I tell you, God told me that I have been elected. I have been selected to say the things that I say. Come on up in the room. Ah, nah, nah, nah. We got to see growth. We've got to see growth. We've got to see growth in us and in the people that belongs to the body of Christ. Come on. Well, our speech shouldn't be the same way. I give you credit. If you're just getting in the house of God, getting saved, and you're growing, yeah, you might still have some way to go. But I'm talking to the old heads. I want the old heads to talk back to me. People that have been there a long time and their speech have not got elevated. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? You all talk to me, somebody. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Why well, growth is stunning. Come on. We're stunning. Come on. Sometimes we're stunning because we want to be stunning. Come on. But I'm here to tell you, you need to get dipped in the Holy Ghost. My God. Say, God, I told you guys we're having a tongue revival and we're putting the tongues on the altar. And as we put our tongues on the altar, the mind is going first. Oh, my shit, hey. Put your mind on the altar. Let this mind be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus came to the earth realm, suffered, bled, and died. Now, I don't believe he was talking all kind of talk. What about you? Come on. I believe Jesus knew his destiny. He knew he was destined to go to the cross for you, for you, and for me. And he wasn't on the earth realm talking all kind of talk. I believe he kept his mind on things that were true. He said, I know I'm Jesus Christ. I don't hear nobody. I know God sent me to the earth realm to save this whole world. St. John 3 and 16 tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave, he gave, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, I am a whosoever. I thank God. Woo! I'm not trying to be big. I'm not trying to be all this. I am and whosoever. I am a whosoever. You are a whosoever. So he came. That was true. He thought on it. Come on. He thought on those things was honorable. It's honorable. It's honorable to serve my father. Come on. He kept on walking. We got to get to we can be like Jesus. Uh, we got to keep on walking. In the midst of negativity, when all this stuff is going on, we got to keep on walking. What are you saying? When you face adversity, what are you saying? Do you maintain the cause? Do you know why you're going through what you're going through with? Do you know the end results? Come on, we win. Ah, bah. Oh, girls, oh, boys, oh, men, oh, women, we win. Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there be, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about it. Honey, we got a lot to praise God for. I don't know about you. By the time you get through praising God, thinking on all these things, negativity will get out of the way. I dare you. I double dare to take Philippians 4 and 8. Let this be your guide. Let this be what propels you to get rid of negativity. I'm going to think on these things, honey. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Ah, I'm going to think on these things because I'm putting my mind on the altar. And I know the revival starts in my mind. And as my mind is revived, as my mind is renewed, my speech will be renewed also. You can't help but talk on good things. If there is anything worthy, what is worthy of praise in your life? Think on it. It's another day that the Lord has kept us. Think on it. Come on. I have my life. I have my health. I have my strength. Yeah. I know somebody said, well, my body got a little pain, but thank God. How about shit? You got to learn how to thank God for the pain. My God. Thank God for the pain. Get a praise. Get a praise. I dare you. By the time you get through thinking on all these things that are worthy of praise, Lord, you kept us all through the night. You didn't let the death angel take us out. Father, you watched over my children. You watched over the spouses. You watched over the grandchildren. You watched over siblings. Honey, whoo, that's praiseworthy right there. My God, I may not have a million dollars, but I got some money, honey. <laughs> whoo, thank you, God. 
Come on, people. Let's think on these things. We are canceling out negativity. And once again, I pray, I pray, my prayer is that you have been blessed by this teaching. We stayed four weeks. Oh, I'm trying to wrap it up. We'll see what the Lord says. But it's so important that we monitor our speech. And just in case we come back on here and go this round again, I'm challenging you. And if I don't come back on with this same teaching next Thursday, I am challenging you. Seven more days. Seven more days. That'll be 28. Come on. That'll be four weeks. Seven times four is 28. Come on. 28 days. We're going to break this thing. We're going to break it. Uh, I feel God saying we're going to break it. I'm raising up some people right now. God is raising up a remnant. Come on. And we got to talk differently. We can't sound like the world. We are ambassadors. We represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And when we open our mouths, what we say, that sound like God. My, my, my. Are you with me? I just need to know tonight, are you with me? Oh, I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. Thank you once again for being with us for this teaching. Don't forget, you can share these teachings out. You can send it out in uh, Messenger. On, in Messenger, You can get the link, send it out as a message. You can send it out in an email, whatever. Let's get this word out. God is trying to train us so we can talk what's right. My God, it's simple. God is only training us to talk the right talk. So share, share, share. On your way out, I need you guys to hit that thumbs up button. Sometimes, you know, you come on, you don't hit the thumbs up button, but that will know, that will let YouTube know that you have liked this broadcast, and it will also cause it to fall in other people's timelines of news feed on YouTube. On our power, I have what I call the evangelist. And perhaps I'm going to adopt some evangelists or on here, on church on Thursday. Because I don't do the work by myself, but I do it with you, you, and you. So anyone on here who starts sharing these teachings out, put in the chat and let me know. And I will deem you an evangelist. We all are called to evangelize. Yes, ma'am. You may not ever get a certificate. That's all right. If I don't get a certificate of what I do, you know what? It's all right. But I want to uh, honor you as being an evangelist because you are sharing, sharing, sharing. Don't forget, now if you have not subscribed to this channel, please, ma'am and sir, do me that little favor. Hit that subscription bell and subscribe so you will be notified when I go live or when new content is uploaded to this channel. Please do that. Please do that. We are coming in now. Thank you once again for being with us on this Thursday night for Church on Thursday. I am Apostle Francis D. Hardison, and I say unto all of you, you go with God, and God will certainly go with you. May grace and peace be multiplied unto you. God bless you. Connected to us by visiting my website www.francisdhardison.org.